In 2012, Apple had made headlines that they had nearly $100 billion in cash, with $64 billion of it offshore. The late Steve Jobs was known for hoarding piles of money for what he claims for bold risks, such as acquisitions, than for stock buybacks or dividends. After going through many traumatizing events where the company almost went bankrupt, Apple grew a habit of stockpiling cash. In contrast to Jobs' statement, the culture of Apple has always been doing things themselves and re-imaging features through their style of development, so they don't acquire other companies often. This soon caught the eyes of an activist investor known as Carl Icahn. On August 13, 2013, Carl Icahn tweeted, We currently have a large position in Apple. We believe the company to be extremely undervalued. Spoke to Tim Cook today. More to come. Sending share of Apple soaring and ended the day with a 5% gain. Carl Icahn was born on February 16, 1936 in Queens, New York. Both his parents were substitute teachers, so in turn, Icahn was quite the hardworking student. He had big dreams and big goals, such as going to an Ivy League school. His parents had promised him that they would pay for his college education if he was accepted by Yale, Harvard, or Princeton. His teacher discouraged him from even applying, saying that kids from around here don't get into those schools. To his parents' surprise, he was accepted by Princeton, in which he enrolled in. However, his father had said that they will keep their promise to pay for the tuition, but not the room and board. His father said, you're a smart kid, you can figure out how to pay for that yourself. So Carl got a summer job at the Malibu Beach Club. There he ended up joining a regular poker game with the cabana owners. At first, he didn't even know how to play, and they would clean him out. Then he read three books on poker in two weeks and turned things around. He was 10 times the player the others were, and every summer he would win $2,000, which was equivalent to $50,000 in today's money. Carl then went on to medical school in New York University School of Medicine, but later dropped out two years later to join the Army Reserve. Icon would then begin his career as a stockbroker in 1961 and later bought a seat on the New York Stock Exchange by borrowing money from his uncle. He started making large sums of money, about 1.5 to 2 million a year, working in arbitrage. Finally, he started his own firm, Icon Enterprises. In 1978, he started taking large positions in undervalued companies that weren't run well. This led to developing a reputation as a corporate raider, with one of his most notable hostile takeovers being Trans World Airlines in 1985. A corporate raid is the process of buying a large stake in a corporation and then using shareholder voting rights to force the company to meet your demands. This could manifest in a number of ways, such as swaying other shareholders to vote your way into holding board seats or putting public pressure on the management. Corporations don't like this because the demands in raids are to the benefit of the shareholders and not always the underlying business. In the Trans World Airlines example, the company tried to find another company to merge with, but Icon succeeded and fired the CEO, making himself the new CEO in the process. He then took the company private and sold off the company's parts, such as their London routes, to American Airlines. He also merged rating with green mailing, in which he started to buy stocks in Philips Petroleum and threatened a hostile takeover unless the company rebought the shares at a premium price. Fearing the icon would follow through with his threats, Phillips Petroleum agreed to his demands. Over the years, people began to see his tactics as bullying and disliked the investor for his demeanor. But with his competitive nature, he reasoned that his raids were profitable for ordinary shareholders. With his years of experience as an activist investor, Icon was eyeing Apple's treasure trove of cash. After making headlines about their cash hoard, Apple started using stock buybacks and dividends in the third quarter of 2012 and planned on continuing for the next three years. The dividends were expected to cost the iPhone company $2.5 billion per quarter. Buybacks can be fantastic for shareholders because they reduce the overall outstanding shares and in turn increase the value of the stock. 
Dividends are the most frowned upon option to do because they are double taxed, once at the corporate level and the other by capital gains tax to the shareholder. Because Apple was continually growing in profits, they could afford to do both after they had received pressure from another activist investor, David Einhorn. But Icon had other plans. He wanted Apple to borrow money cheaply to buy back even more shares in addition to the buybacks and dividends they were already using. To gain a foothold on Apple and pressure Tim Cook, his company bought a billion dollars worth of stock. Icon proposed Apple load up on $150 billion in debt to accelerate the buyback program. Even after shares fell after quarterly results in January 2014, the corporate raider loaded up even more shares, about half a billion dollars worth, as he felt they were undervalued. Finally, Tim Cook later announced that Apple would be updating their buyback program sometime towards the end of the first quarter. So, are buyback programs a good idea? In 2020, buyback received tremendous criticism as corporate companies such as airlines needed money from the government to bail them out. That case could be argued, as stockpiling cash could have just been used in emergencies instead of taking it from taxpayers. But the shareholders have voting rights, and they ultimately decide the direction of the company in these matters. As for Apple, many analysts were concerned that the cash could be used to buy up other companies, which would be even better in the long term. Icon was ultimately successful in his demands as Apple's board of directors agreed to repurchase $130 billion worth of shares from April 2014 to December 2015. Prior to this, Apple had only repurchased $66 billion from August 2012 to March 2014. In that period of time, the stock hit a low around $75 to a high of $133 per share, even though in a letter, Icon stated he believed the stock to be worth $240. After the accelerated period, the stock continued to climb to over $155 over the next few years. Over the period of his involvement with Apple, Icon had amassed a total holding of $3.6 billion of the company's shares. Overall, Icon gained an estimated $2 billion and announced he had dumped his holdings live on CNBC after he got what he came for. Corporate raids are rare nowadays, as more and more tactics to combat them are being used, such as poison pills or golden parachutes. Difference classes of shares with different amounts of voting rights have also become popular among tech companies. Take Facebook, for example. As founder Mark Zuckerberg owns the majority of the voting rights and ultimately has the final say in the company's direction, but no matter the walls or obstacles, activists investors still exist today and Carl Icahn is one of the most prominent investors in history. As of 2020, Carl Icahn's net worth has amassed over $14 billion, and the 84-year-old is still active in making investment decisions in his company today. What do you think of Carl Icahn? Leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you're new.